So in this video I want to show you my favorite chocolate souffle that I used to cook many many years ago for Sean Collins as well as for Giorgio Armani and many other celebrities when I used to run restaurants in London. Now the French in their cooking always liked sort of airy mousses and emulsions and foams made out of eggs and cream and butter and souffle is one of those masterpieces just like hollandaise and mayonnaise and many others. So most of us think it is very difficult to cook a souffle but it's actually quite simple it's quite quite quick and you don't need much time or ingredients and they're always impressive and spectacular and always sort of a bit they bring a bit of magic to, on, to your dinner table now they got the word from the latin word which is called subflare and today it's a french word which means basically puffed up which happens through the hot air expansion inside the egg foam. Now the origin of that souffle is attributed to Antoine Belois and his book in 1814 used several recipes for souffle mainly for poultry and at the same time another chef Louis Eustache Houdet published a book called The French Cook and he had a series of dessert souffle recipes in his booklet. Now Souffles can obviously, they can be tricky. And one of the things is that you should never change the recipe. So I saw a lot of people, they basically said, oh yeah, the recipe asked for eight serves, I'll uh, just cut it down, I'll uh, just make four serves. And then suddenly the recipe doesn't work. So stick to the original amounts. If you start cutting it down, they often can fail. Now, you also need to think that souffles obviously can be served in much larger portions than other desserts because they mainly exist of hot air. And so I'm going to give you a few tips and there's two videos in this series and the first lot of tips I bring you on now and then the second lot you can see in the second video and after we watch those two videos it will perfect your souffles every time it will never fail and if you want to get more information about it please check out my online cooking school where you can literally learn every cooking technique there is that you need to know for cooking so the first tip i want to give you is that never ever cut the recipe down in half for example if you only want to cook souffle for four people but you know your recipe says it's for eight people don't cut it down in half because somehow whenever you cut the souffle recipe down it seems not to work anymore so stick to the original amounts and always think that souffles you can serve them in much larger portion anyway than any other dessert because they mostly exist of hot air so the first step is that you need to have all the ingredients at the same temperature at a warm room temperature so they combine much better and that will means they will rise much better the second tip is that you need an even heating oven and the oven needs to be super super hot sometimes the recipe will ask for water bars sometimes the recipe will not ask for water bars and you really need to follow that what each recipe says again get into that a little bit later on but it's an endless question my cooking school when do i use a water bath and when do i not now why would you use a water bath to start with that's another question well that comes from the chemistry how a souffle works and the souffle needs to be sort of super you need to seal it really really fast on the outside as fast as you seal it on the outside it better it will rise because if you seal the outside it basically the air bubbles inside the souffle get trapped and because it is sealed they can't escape anymore so that when hot air basically when those air bubbles expand through hot air that will make your souffle rise really really well which means the hot water bath is basically there to heat your mold really really quickly and through that trap the air bubbles inside so that the souffle will rise much better now when i worked for a short while at the three michelin star chef freddy Chirade, his head chef philippe rochard showed me a way that i have not seen anywhere else and i would say it's the best method i ever seen and i still use it all the time because he cooked the souffle that needed to be cooked on the dry heat but in order to seal the mold he brought some water in a shallow pan to the boil on the stove top 
and then you put the mold into the water bath for one to two minutes before transferring the souffle without the water bath in the oven and cooking the souffle dry for six to seven minutes. Now the idea was obviously that he heated the mold as fast as he could so that he sealed basically the air bubbles inside. So here we go. These are the first few rules on perfecting a souffle and check out the video after that where I explain you a few more tips and please enjoy the recipe. So here we go. So the only challenge you will have with that souffle is you need to find chocolate that is 100%. If you don't have that, use 80% chocolate. That works pretty well too. So first we need to make a so-called uh, cream patisserie which is basically I'm using some milk and some corn flour and you mix that together so I used half the milk of the recipe and the corn flour stir that really really well together and then set that aside you need to sort of dissolve the corn flour first before you put it into the hot milk then the next thing is separate your eggs now when you separate your eggs as I said to you before make sure that they're room temperature and it's easiest to do is to literally just let the egg yolk do its work and you just don't have to shift it around cut the eggshell on a very sharp edge and then basically hold the egg yolk on an angle in the shell and just let the egg white drip off then mix the egg yolks with the corn flour mixture and set it aside so next thing you then can do is bring your milk to the boil now make sure it's full fat milk and then bring that to the boil and to that you can obviously add some flavorings to it if you want to you know if you like a bit of rum flavor or if you like a bit of vanilla essence you can add that to your milk and once the milk boils then you basically add the corn flour mixture don't do that too early otherwise it might burn so bring the milk to full boil add the corn flour mixture and then bring that back to the boil now sort of halfway through you will find it sort of doesn't look right because it gets lumps it thickens and it gets lumps and it just keep fully boiling that the lumps will disappear and now you basically have what I would always call a, a white sauce or a sweet white sauce now then you add your sugar and stir that all through you could have added the sugar earlier to your milk if you want to it's totally up to you so that is your white sauce or that's your base of your souffle and that's what you have with this traditional french souffles they always will ask you for that sauce this is a cheese souffle raspberry souffle or so on you will always need that sauce so the next thing you then do is you add your chocolate to that mixture and it should be warm enough to just to melt the chocolate through so if you're going to use something like milk chocolate it's not going to work 80 percent chocolate is the only thing you can do if you can't get 80% chocolate or you cannot get 100% chocolate like the recipe asks then you might just switch to cocoa powder so you will replace the amount of chocolate in the recipe with cocoa powder that is not sweetened so the next thing you then basically set that aside and let it come down to a warm room temperature you could literally put that mixture into the fridge as well if you want to pre-make your souffle but before you then mix the egg white together with it you need to bring it back to room temperature otherwise it will simply you know it will be too cold I will not allow you to do that so what I'm going to show you now is how to grease the molds so in this video I just use butter as it is and you can do that you can of course use melted butter which I'll show you in the next video so just let the butter melt nicely to um, sort of it's 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 a warm room temperature and grease it as thick as you can so it's very important to grease it everywhere you need to grease it really really thick then the next thing I will show you is to put sinks in on the sides which you know in my case today I use caster sugar so why would I put sugar into the mold it's actually gonna stick it's actually not gonna help sometimes people put grated chocolate there or they put cocoa powder there it's actually gonna stick so it's actually not helping but the sugar or the function of the sugar is that when the souffle comes out of the mold it's gonna be that hot that it basically melts the sugar and then this souffle on the outside will be really nice and shiny so that's the reason why people put sugar into the molds never ever put flour into your mold because flour will definitely make it stick okay so that's why if you put sugar or cocoa powder or cocoa dust 
in there, you need to make sure you grease it extra thick with butter so that it cannot stick. And flour is a no-no. So next thing, you whip the egg whites and you whip them really, really well. Yeah, They need to be quite firm. They need to be quite stiff. But you don't want to over whip them, as I will explain in the second video, because if you over whip them, you destroy the air bubbles within that sort of net or sponge you create now, and then it will not hold up anymore. So towards the end, when the egg white is nice and firm, you add the sugar, and then it will firm up even a bit more. So you whip it for another minute or so. And then you will find that your egg white is firm, but it's still a little bit creamy. Because if you over whip it, it will not make your souffle rise. If you under whip it, it's going to be hard for your souffle to shape it and put it into the mold. So here we go. First you start off with a quarter of the egg white and you mix that with your chocolate mixture. And that might take a little bit of time. You might have to take a whisk as well. It depends on how thick you or what temperature you work and how thick your chocolate sauce is. So it just need to mix that together. Don't worry too much about it. You will lose quite a bit of air from that first lot of egg white, but it's the second lot that you fold in where you have to be very careful. So the other three quarters I added now and then I just gently fold it into the mixture. How long do I do that? Until I sort of can see it has all become one. And then you have the nice meringue, you see it is well mixed and you always need to work from the bottom of the bowl upwards because you will always find that the most bits they stick to the bottom and then when you fill your souffle in towards the end then you suddenly realize you haven't mixed it properly. So then put it in a mold and what I'm going to show you now is exactly what chefs do in fine dining restaurants is you, you don't put your souffle in like three quarters high in a mold. So souffles do rise because chefs put them into the mold already so high in there as possibly they can. So I'm gonna make sure that my souffle already sticks almost a centimeter out of the mold and then I bake it. Because if I fully bake it, they never come out of the mold. That's why when you cook your souffles at home, they always look a bit flat because recipes often tell you to only fill the mold by three quarters. That's not what really good chefs do. That's not what Michelin star chefs do. They fill the molds up like literally the souffle is sticking out one centimeter. So what you see me doing there now is basically moving it away from the top. So the little spatula and I basically created a gap between the, the dough and the mold. Now if you, if you don't want to do all of that you can just do what I did here now. You just basically fill the souffle into the mold without it touching the edges. Then it goes in the oven at 220 degrees for eight minutes. If it's much bigger, 12 minutes. In between, I make a quick chocolate sauce. So in that case, I just melt some milk and then I add chocolate to it. So the ratio is approximately 50-50, but it depends what sort of chocolate you use. And then just put the chocolate in it and you need to bring it to a boil before you know how much more chocolate you have to add. So you can see that's like a thick ganache. That's going to be my chocolate sauce. If it's too thick or if it splits, it basically means you don't have enough liquid in it. So you just add a little bit of water, add a little bit of milk. So you can see the souffle is now cooking on traditional bake on 215 degrees. I could even go a little bit higher and you can see now how they will start to rise and how they get bigger and bigger and you can see now the outside of the souffle is sealed and that is the time when the souffle will rise. It will not rise as long as the outside of the souffle is wet. So you can see them now nicely coming out of the molds and rising and rising. It it's, looks pretty amazing. and. Again, going back to what I said before, the secret is to make sure that the souffle sticks out nicely of the mold. Is basically that you put it into the mold already high, as high as you can. And here we go. There's your souffle. It's just out of the oven. You can see it sticks nicely out of the mold, exactly like you wanted. Chocolate sauce on the side. It has a nice brown sort of top, which you want as well. And then just dust it with sugar. And then to serve it, you basically just make a little hole in there and you can see it's perfectly cooked. It's still soft in the center. That's exactly how you want it. If you overcook it, your souffle will become very chewy. It will also collapse really quickly when it stands outside of your fridge. And here we go. Now, 
It's a pretty impressive souffle, isn't it? And if you see, it actually doesn't need much. So you can see it's really nicely cooked by approximately 50%. If you want to cook your souffle a little bit longer, leave it a bit longer. Here we go, look at it from the side. And that's what usually waiters do, they make a little hole in there. Sometimes they just put a scoop of ice cream, like when I worked for Pierre Kaufman, he had the pistachio souffle, which you can learn in my online courses. And he just put a dollop of ice cream on the top. But in my case, I put a chocolate sauce in, and sometimes it might be a raspberry coulis or even just plain Roman here, Cointreau. And here we go. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please sign up to my channel, check out my other videos, and I look forward to seeing you at the second part of this video.